Hi, I'm Brad, and now you're wondering if I'm actually wearing pants. So not too long ago, I did a video talking about a refresh of an XR2 chipset. Uh, I basically titled it the next generation of Qualcomm's XR chip or something like that. And I've been doing a lot of Qualcomm related videos because they're pretty much the main chip supplier for every VR Android device, at least for now. A lot of people were disappointed that there were no rumors or news about an XR3 or like a true next generation step up in terms of chip power and like maybe going to a new node or anything. But uh, literally today we found some new information. This is actually a big thanks to Samulia, as always, who found this originally, that there are finally references or at least import records to a brand new chip that might be a true XR2 generation two or an XR3, whatever you want to call it for now. Nothing is official, so let's just call it XR3 for fun. Now, just to remind people, uh, Metacambria, and I've talked to multiple people about this, is going to be using an XR uh, SXR 2150P chip. Again, it's that refresh of the XR2 that's basically separating the RAM and stuff from the packaging to get better performance and everything. Um, the Quest 2 had a SXR 2130P, so not much uh, different in terms of numbering, but I do want to talk about this because we actually found out a lot about uh, the specifications of the Quest Pro or Cambria from import records before I got a good source. Um, the project that was known as this XR2 refresh was known internally, at least at Qualcomm, as Project Tron. But uh, more recently, uh, there has been a new found SXR 2230P, which is now going to be called Project Halliday which is hilarious. Uh, Halliday is actually a reference to Ready Player One. He's basically the creator of the Oasis that would end up becoming a dystopian nightmare. So hopefully uh, things go better this turn around. Now, I don't have much else to say, but the fact that they're going a full digit from 21 to 22 does actually indicate, at least from a logical level, that this would be a big improvement over the seven nanometer uh, chip. I have talked to people recently, and I believe that uh, some of the big vendors will start hearing information later this year about the specifications if they're not already close to Qualcomm. Um, but again, it's not expected a lot of these products would come out until next year with this new chipset. So maybe Quest 3 will possibly come with a brand new chip that can power games a lot better. Now, since we don't have too much information, there is one more thing I want to leave off with. Uh, Usually when there's a new chip from Qualcomm, they like to uh, work together with Gore-Tec or some company to make a reference design to kind of give an idea of what this new chip can uh, enable if you put it into a headset. They did this with XR2. That's what you can see. These are an AR and uh, VR platform here. And I'm wondering if they're going to be doing the same and showing off something similar with this new chip within the next year. Because if you go into the export records, they give some very interesting detailed information that might make people possibly excited. So if you over, uh, hover over here, they did give some specifications of a 2X 4K by 4K MR, which stands for Mixed Reality Headset. Now, the fact that they're saying 4K by 4K, it's probably referring to actual displays per eye is what I would speculate here. I've been talking about that specification a lot. Apple is also suggested to be uh, working on a headset that is mixed reality with uh, two 4K per eye micro OLED displays. And they also go in to talk about how there's uh, 10X mono cameras. I would assume those are cameras. Um, why can't the 4K by 4K be cameras? Well, generally, uh, square sensors like that are not really consumer level. They usually go for the right widescreen uh, format, 16.9 for cameras, including with Cambria. Uh, Meta Quest Pro is going to be having a 16 megapixel, very standard format camera sensor inside. So I'm really hopeful that whatever this is, uh, maybe we'll see sooner as a reference design. It would be amazing to see a 4K by 4K per eye reference design sometime in the new future. Um, it's also possible this is for a work in, uh, work in progress project at one of these companies. But considering it seems to be very early in terms of this chipset, I do not expect that. Um, but we will see. Again, I think 4K by 4K per eye is going to be the standard for high-end headsets, especially after Apple does release stuff. Um, I speculated for a while that the Deckard is looking to use a uh, display with a very similar resolution 
per eye because there's a lot of connections to this steamboat display, um, which you can find a lot of journalists uh, reports about that. That's pretty much all I had to say about this video. It's just a really cool tidbit. I wanted to go into a little bit of detail, not too long. Um, again, I want a sp uh, special thanks to all my super patrons, Cognitive 3D, Popeye, James Younger, DDS, Jonathan, Tiny Key, Siraj AR, Jiggly Poof, Mitochondria, Fiine, 3000, Anil Jason, Green Zero Photon, Academic Inside, Samson Eagleman, and Arthur Brainville. They give me money so I can do this. Thank you, guys. If you want to support me, go to bradsmells.com slash Patreon, and I'll see you for the next video. Um, I kind of like doing these short videos that explain what's going on as soon as I find them. And if you like that, too, then let me know in the comments, and we will keep doing more like this. All right. Bye.